Hey everybody, I'm ML7, a support, not healer, and you're watching Kiriko for Noobs. This video is not meant to be an expert guide on how to play the hero, but a basic gameplay introduction for new Kiriko players. Since at the moment of filming this, I didn't have vast experience with the hero, the tips and tricks I'll offer here are more centered around what I wanted to personally know before I started playing Kiriko, as this would have helped me get a better understanding of her. Before we hop in, there will be a few elements in the video that have been discussed extensively in one of my previous ones, the Kiriko roles, so if you're searching for a more technical video about the hero, that's the one for you. Let's get this started. Setting step. First things first, change your primary fire with your secondary fire, as this will make the gameplay feel more fluid. Now you're ready to pop off, let's get into gameplay tips. Tip number one, focus on healing initially. You queue up, enter the game, and spend 90% of the time trying to land your kunai on the enemy. You press tab, and see probably a 10-20% to accuracy while your teammates are dying left and right. You get frustrated and want to give up on the hero. But then you remember that the primary utility a support can provide is healing. So you start healing more and more, and you start winning games, because the enemy Kiriko is focused on not landing shots. After some time, you'll start recognizing scenarios when healing is not necessary, so you have time to get some damage in as well. An example would be, in the middle of a team fight, when everybody's full HP. That's when you can throw some knives at the enemies. Tip number 2. Heal in the ultimate. If you are struggling to land knives, you'll probably struggle even more in the Kitsune Rush when the fire rate is increased. Focus primarily on healing in the ultimate, and if you need to do damage, start by doing damage to the enemy tank, as they usually have the biggest hitbox. Also, here's a quick trick. If you miss a lot during her ultimate, you can smash the melee key really fast and do more than 500 damage in a short period of time, so that should be more than enough to assassinate two squishy targets. Don't let the melee visual indicator deter you. You can sneak in some extra melees without the animation even appearing. Tip number 3. Spam chokes at a head level of 150 to 250 HP targets. Eventually, you will have to do damage, and Kiriko headshots do 120 damage, while her body shots do only 40 damage. To increase your damage output, place your crosshair at choke points where you think the squishy's heads will be. Placing your crosshair precisely will come with a lot of Overwatch 2 gameplay, but if you actively try to predict this, you will get faster results. There are other reasons why you want to do this. Firstly, landing a headshot on a squishy target might force them to fall back, or at least, you get to force some cooldowns. If you land one on a tank, it won't matter that much because they can, shockingly, tank a lot. Secondly, damage to DPS and support characters give you more ultimate charge compared to damage to tanks because a part of the passive tanks have makes them give less ultimate charge to enemies that damage them. Tip number 4. Do not teleport to allies that went in 1 vs 5. Supports know the feeling. We want to save everybody, bro. Unfortunately, in a game like Overwatch 2, your teammates will sometimes go in 1 vs 5 to complete imaginary quests. In this case, you might feel the itch to teleport to them and try to save them, but in 9 out of 10 cases, you will probably die by doing so. So don't. Make a decision fast if you can save them or not. To help you with this decision, try to apply the numerical advantage goal. If they are in a 1 vs 1 in UTPN, that would be a 2 vs 1, so you should win in most cases. It is better to decide faster rather than later, because if you do this too late, your teammate might die and you might be left there to defend yourself all alone. Continuing on this topic, don't be afraid to make mistakes like these. The faster you do them, the faster you learn. Hesitating too much might cost you the game later on in your Overwatch 2 career, so it's better to have a trial and error type of approach with these kind of abilities. Tip number 5. Save your protection Suzu for important stuff. You might be tempted to cleanse the first negative effect that hits your Reinhardt, but sometimes that isn't the play, because right after you cleanse it, a huge debuff hits your team and you don't have your protection Suzu available. 15 seconds after the game starts, if you press tab, you can see the enemy team comp. Make a mental list with how many important effects you can cleanse. For instance, Zenyatta's Discord Orb is not that important compared to Ana's Anti-Nade or Sleep Dart. This way, if you see a Discord Orb being attached, you will not use your Suzu to cleanse it, but save it for something more important. As a simple way to keep track of what's important to cleanse, just ask yourself, 
If I would be playing Genji Guy now, what debuffs from the enemy team annoy me the most? You're probably wondering if you should cleanse the anti-nade or the sleep dog. My opinion is that if the nade comes first and it hits a couple of people, use the cleanse. If the sleep dog comes first and hits someone in the open that can be easily killed, use it as well. So if the sleep dog hits someone right next to me that's hard to get to, I would save my cleanse. There are other situations when I would save my Suzu as well, when the enemies have ultimates that I can counter, like Reinhardt's Archshatter, or when one of my teammates is getting really low HP and would die if I don't use my ability. In case there are no debuffs to cleanse or you want to use it proactively, then do it so that you are enabling your allies. Throw the Suzu on your Widowmaker right before peeking, make your father invulnerable while using her ultimate, and so on. Suzu usage is very situational and there are a lot of factors that can change how you should use it, but the stuff I've mentioned before should be a good starting point. Tip number 6. Use your ultimate when your team is grouped up. The easiest way to get value out of your ultimate is to use it before the team fight starts as an engage tool. This means that you have to make sure that both teams are 5 vs 5 and that your team is grouped up so that they can take advantage of your Kitsune Rush. Tip number 7. Do not be afraid to use your ultimate for yourself. If the fights are scrappy, remember that apart from the speed boost while in your ultimate, you also get faster reload time, increased fire rate, Reinhardt swings his hammer faster for example, and cooldown reduction so you can pump more damage, more heals, and use more abilities. Your healing and damage output are quite high on Kiriko so you can turn the tides of the fight easily with your ultimate even if you use it only for yourself. Tip number 8. Don't forget to use your sweet step out of spawn. In a game like Overwatch 2, every second matters. So if somebody respawns before you do, don't forget to teleport to them to get to your team faster. Tip number 9. Poke before team fights. A lot of players focus up when the team fight starts, but you should always focus when the team fight ends. What I mean with this is that after the team fight finishes, put yourself in a poke aggressive position so you can get some ultimate charge and maybe force some cooldowns from the enemies before the fight starts. Who knows, maybe you can get lucky and even get a pick. You should avoid poking before fights if you already have your ultimate and have a difficult time landing headshots because you'll only feed the enemy's ultimates. Tip number 10. Wall climb for better positioning. Kiriko is one of the highest mobility supports in the game, so don't spend all game playing next to your teammates. Instead, try to take high ground whenever you can so you can create multiple angles of attack. Be careful of two things when doing this. Number one, do not play in the open against snipers as they can one-shot you. And number two, make sure you're close enough to your team to be able to heal them and also be in teleport range in case you need a fast escape. Tip number 11. Do not get discouraged. Hikiko is a very hard hero to learn and master, but also insanely fun to play. Even if your initial experiences with her seem kind of meh. If you enjoy her kit and enjoy playing her, then don't forget that Overwatch 2 is a game and you should have fun while playing it. Win or lose. If you practice, you will see that in no time you will be able to master her aim and abilities and your teammates are going to be wondering, who is this tough 500 smurf in our team? You got this. I hope that this video helped you out with your first steps in playing Kiriko. Good luck with your games. If you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe. And remember, it's called support, not healer. ML7 out. Hey, I'm Olaf. If you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe. Meow.